Hi everyone, I'm here today with a video that has been a long time in the making, or at least it has been promised for a long time. I'm going to fight the Cigarette of Doom scenario from the first volume Tabletop Battles of the first edition of Warhammer Fantasy. This scenario is um, about six dwarves that are on the run from goblins. The dwarves find a ziggurat where they will make their last stand. Now, first edition, as you may or may not know, is a little bit of a, how shall we say it, um, not very complete on the rules. Now, what I mean by that is this. There are several things in here that are either not explained or that have no, um, that, that really don't make sense for this scenario. Let's go over a few of them first. Uh, first thing I want to clarify is that even though in the book it says that in the shooting phase all players may shoot, this is later on in the book it says that only the active player can shoot and it has of course also in the Citadel Journal and in the White Dwarf with the Rules questions, uh, it has been clarified that this was meant to say only the active player can shoot. So that's what I'm going to do. now. If you may remember from this first Time Machine episode I did, in first edition you have two movement phases. And that's important because this scenario is dependent upon things that happen in the movement phase. You start off with the dwarves standing on top of the ziggurat and out of the tree line come some goblins. The Goblins get reinforcements. Every subsequent movement phase, every active player movement phase for three active player movement phases, you get d6 more goblins. Now, I don't know how this is meant to be played. If it is only the regular movement phase you have, or if it is also the second player movement phase. The same thing goes for the dwarves. The dwarves score one victory point for every movement phase a dwarf is left alive. So I'm going to count this to mean only the first movement phase, so not the second movement phase or the reinforcements phase as it, I believe, later has become known in maybe second but definitely third edition. Another thing is that the dwarves and the hobgoblins, uh, and the goblins too, they don't really like each other. As a matter of fact, they all hate each other. Now, the rules for hatred are as follows. One, move towards the hated opponent whenever possible. Two, charge whenever they are within charge move. This is not a very good rule for dwarves in a defensive position. So what I am going to do is instead of playing this hatred rule and having the goblins draw the dwarves out of the ziggurat, I'm going to play this that the dwarves only have to charge at the goblins that are on the same level as they are. So they don't need to go down the stairs, down the ramps to go to a uh, goblin that they see and that they hate. Another thing is that in combat you get a lot of bonuses and with shooting as well. And a lot of modifiers and one of these modifiers is if you are fighting at troops in skirmish mode. I'm assuming that uh, if you fire at single models then it would be the same as in skirmish mode. But that brings up another question as well. How do the goblins fight? Uh, it says that a unit consists of at least five models. So if I get my goblins, will they be single models or will they be in units? I'm going to play this as if this was a Warhammer skirmish game. So, uh, or maybe a game of more time. Let's, let's just go with those rules. So I'm not going to uh, do a two hit penalty for shooting at single models because as far as I can find, uh, there isn't one. There's only one for firing at troops in skirmish order. And um, I'm also not going to... Um, what was I going to say? I'm not going to group my 
goblins into units. So each goblin will be a unit of its own. That will have an impact on what will happen in the game when uh, there is combat. Because in combat, for combat results, you count the number of wounds that have been caused, and then the losing sides gets pushed back. And this can happen a couple of times, two times for the goblins, five times for the dwarves, and then they start to rout. Now, this will mean that there will be, uh, not be any route tests taken during this game. Uh, no troops can break from combat. And the reason for that is that uh, all the goblins have only one single wound, except for the hobgoblin chieftain who has two wounds. The hobgoblins are frenzied, and if you are in frenzy mode, you do get a bonus wound, which means that you ignore the first wound that you take. But yeah, that still gives you a very small chance of running away. And uh, let me just really quickly check the rules for Frenzy. Because, um, let's see. Now you do not ignore morale. So morale still plays a role here. So even if your Frenzied troops... Um, are breaking so it, it, it can be the case that the hobgoblin chieftain can run that's the only one uh, now morale is also playing a role in this and uh, you should take a morale check whenever a unit falls below half of their strength since all of my troops are individual models this one is discounted when a friendly unit of at least equal numerical strength, which is everything, uh, breaks and routes within 15 inches, but that's not going to happen because practically nothing can break or route. When the army leader is killed, that can happen. So that will happen when the hobgoblin chieftain uh, dies. And for an individual who is wounded, this is one that is uh, for the dwarves. Because the dwarves all have two wounds, and Thorgrim, the dwarf leader, even has three. So, that is um, placing a bit of a limit on what these, uh, how much of these rules we will see in action. Uh, these rules were definitely made for fighting with blocks of troops. And the scenario included in this book is one with, at least the way I see it, individual models. So that will be a little bit of a, um, well, I'm not gonna say a problem, but you won't get to see all the rules and you don't get the full first edition experience. One thing I would like to do is include an optional rule. And the optional rule, uh, or the advanced rule, is called critical hits. This means that if you have a bow skill of four or better, you may attempt to score a critical hit. Uh, let me see real quick, by the way, if that's uh, if that's even... Yeah, the dwarves can do that. They have a bow skill of four. But I don't think any of the goblins or hobgoblins do. So that might not even be uh, necessary. The only thing it will work at is if you have a hobgoblin that is frenzied. Now, for this scenario, you have, and uh, all the goblins have bow skill of three or two even. Uh, for this scenario, we have a setup that is uh, depicted in the book. Now you have the ziggurat here, which consists of five levels. But my ziggurat on the table behind me only consists of four levels. So that's a little bit of an advantage for the dwarves, uh, no, sorry, for the goblins, because the dwarves can't go that high up. On the other hand, uh, the tree line is a little bit closer here in the picture than I have it on my table. So that will be an advantage for the dwarves. This scenario is probably not meant to be fair anyway. Uh, I also don't think that you get any rules here for who gets the first turn. Um, I'm not even sure if there is something like that in the book, who gets the first turn. So I'm just going to do a straight roll. Uh, no, let's let's not do that. Let's let's have the dwarves. I think it, I think it fits scenario better. Let's have the dwarves on the ziggurat uh, stand there. They've had time to prepare, and then when the goblins come out of the trees, that will be the goblins' first turn, and then the dwarves' first turn. Uh, yeah, I think that will be a fair way to do it. 
Now, one of the rules in this scenario is that the ziggurat, you can only ascend and descend levels via the ramps or the, the steps as they are in my model. Um, this walls themselves are supposed to be six meters high, which would be uh, three inches in game terms. They are not that high, but uh, well, you still can't climb them. What you can do is throw rocks down from one level above to one level below. Dwarves can or any player can uh, look for rocks in the rubble by uh, rolling a 4 plus on a d6. I believe it's in the active player movement phase. Uh, yeah, at the beginning of your active player movement phase. It doesn't say if you then can still shoot, uh, still move in that active player movement phase. I assume not. So, yeah, what I'm going to do is assume that uh, if you look for rocks, you cannot move. But the dwarves have the advantage that they can prepare a position so they get 46 rocks um, and they can put them anywhere on the ziggurat. I don't have any rock counters but I do have these lovely green weirdstone counters in a very appropriate biohazard bag. Yeah, they're just 3D printed so not much of a biohazard or at least not as much as if they were real weirdstone. These are going to be my rocks. I'm going to scatter them about the ziggurat in hopefully strategic places. And then I'm going to roll to see how many goblins will come on in the first turn and in any subsequent turns. Now let's go ahead and play the scenario. Right everyone, here we are with the Ziggurat of Doom scenario. Now you may have noticed that I have changed my clothes. That's because this is not the same day as I recorded the introduction video. Uh, I had to break off the game that I was playing because I ran into some rules issues and I set it up again and played it again and had something similar and then I did it again and ran into some camera issues that my uh, when my SD card was full but now finally I think we can play the scenario and hopefully finish it as well. I've got here my cigarette and you see this die here this is going to be my victory point counter for every dwarf movement phase that they survive they get one victory point. Here are my dwarfs, I got the two crossbowmen on top facing towards the corners so that they can cover um, most of the entrances. I've got Thorgrim over here, he's just the Battle for Skull Pass champion but I didn't have any better dwarf with a warhammer painted up. So this is going to be Thorgrim, he's got a mithril armor and a shield for a 3 plus armor save. And he's got a nice magic warhammer that causes fear, allows him to get into and out of frenzy and do some other fun stuff as well. And then I've got three more dwarfs. Two of them are the skull pass hand weapon and shield guys. And one is the uh, one of the skull pass miners. So he's got a great weapon. All of the dwarfs have just chainmail armor so they're all lightly armored. And the goblins don't have any armor at all apart from shields. Now the first six goblins that I can have enter the table are the hobgoblins. I've got two hobgoblins with hand weapon and shield, an excellent shield, two sneaky gits with additional hand weapons and two hobgoblin archers. And of course I've got my hobgoblin champion. His name is Gutnog, the hobgoblin hero. He is the main antagonist. The rest of the goblins are one of three kinds and I'm going to put them on the table in sort of an evenly matched fashion. I've got regular goblins with hand weapon and shield, I've got night goblins with spears and I've got night goblins with bows. I can also put some red goblins on the table but since I don't have any red goblin models and I wouldn't even know where to begin to look for them, uh, these are just going to be the three kinds that I'm going to use. Night Goblins, Common Goblins and Night Goblins with Bows. Now, uh, the first time I played this I had my cigarette with four levels. And as you can see I have now put some walls and hoardings around basically making this the fifth level. These are the two entrance points and the other two entrance points are blocked where the plants are. These are acting as uh, rubble. So. I have my dwarves here set up on the ziggurat. They are covering this first level. I'm just going to give up the first level 
and then retreat further up if the goblins advance. And in order to make that retreat a little bit more pleasant, my dwarves can put some stones over there. 46 worth of stones. And let's just roll that now. See if I can zoom in a little. Here we are, zoomed in on the pyramid. And let's just put it over here for the rolls. 46 is 13 of the uh, tokens for the dwarves. And let's just roll for the goblins as well. How many goblins do we get in the first round? 3 to 6, and that's just 8. So that's the 6 hobgoblins and then 2 more goblins. So this might be a little bit easy for the dwarves. Let's go ahead and put those tokens where they should go. 13 tokens, I'm going to spread them out a little bit around the levels over here. I'm assuming that the dwarves can't take the tokens with them, so I'm just going to put one over here where they can drop them on the goblins as they advance and walk along with them a little bit. And also do that for other levels as well, maybe some here for the crossbowmen. Let's see how many have I got now, that's uh, 12, one more. Uh, let's put one more over. Yeah, no, let's do it this way. Okay, there we go. Uh, the goblins are going to enter the table from this side over here. Uh, let's see where I'm pointing. Here we are. The goblins are going to enter the table from this side because there they can go up to the first level and then to the second level. And then afterwards, it's the dwarf player that can decide where the additional goblin reinforcements will enter the table. So let's set them up now. Here are my hobgoblins, my chieftain, and six of the hobgoblins. Uh, two archers over here on the flanks, and the two sneaky gits. And then we've got regular goblins coming up behind. I'm going to do one goblin with a hand weapon and a shield, and one night goblin with a bow. Now, let's clean this up, put this all away, and then let's get started with the first turn for this scenario. Hobgoblins are getting the first turn, that's what I uh, decided would be fair. The dwarfs had time to set up, so the hobgoblins get the first turn. And the Hobgoblins got a move of 5. Um, Gutnog even has a move of 6. There is a little bit of a discrepancy here in the uh, rulebook because for most of these um, most of these races you get two move stats separated by a slash. The first one is usually higher, that's the unarmored move speed. And the second one is usually one inch lower or half an inch lower. So that's the armored move speed. Now for dwarves they just move three and a half no matter what they are wearing. But the goblins, they have a... Um, regular goblins have a four slash three. Hobgoblins for some reason have four slash five and the hobgoblin hero has five slash six. So I'm going to assume those numbers have to be turned around that it's six for the hobgoblin hero and five for the regular hobgoblins. Let's start with our first movement phase but before we do that my hobgoblins have the opportunity to get into a frenzy. To do that I have to roll a d6 and on a 5 plus day frenzy. I'm not going to roll for the archers but I am going to roll for the other two, uh, hobgoblins starting with this sneaky git over here. He does a frenzy. The Hobgoblin with hand weapon and shield doesn't frenzy. The hobgoblin with the hand weapon and shield, the other one, also doesn't frenzy. And the other sneaky git also doesn't frenzy. Saving the best for last. How about Gutnog, the hobgoblin hero? He does frenzy. That means he ditches his armor, and I'm assuming that also means he ditches his shield, though I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure if shield counts as armor. But uh, anyway, um, I'm going to say it does. So Gutnog frenzies. He now has to move his full movement speed towards a, an enemy, preferably a hated enemy. 
that's not going to be a problem because everybody hates everybody else. It's 12 inches over there. That's a charge move. So I'm assuming that that means he cannot move again in the second movement phase. There's a lot of things that I have to assume in these rules because a lot of things are unclear. So the hobgoblins move up 5 inches, their maximum move allowance, and the regular goblins move up 4 inches, which is their regular move allowance. Now we get to the shooting phase. The hobgoblins and the goblins have goblin bows, they have a range of 16 inches. This dwarf here, the hero Thorgrim, he has a magic weapon that causes fear. And that means that there is an opportunity if you shoot at him that you may not shoot or that you even have to run away. So I'm going to concentrate my fire on this dwarf over here, Thorgrim's companion. There's going to be three shots, two from the hobgoblins and one from the goblin. Now the range of 16 inches, they are all well within range. None of them are within half range. Half range is the only modifier that counts here. There's no shooting while moving, no shooting at single miniatures. There is a shooting at troops in combat formation, it's in skirmish formation, but I'm going to assume that this doesn't apply here because these are all single models. My hobgoblin has a ballistic skill of 2. That means that he needs a 5 plus to hit on an ordinary day, but it's not an ordinary day because it's over half range, so 6 plus, and since the dwarves are on a higher level, they can hide behind any rubble, giving them hard cover. So that's an 8 plus for the hobgoblin. A 6 followed by a 5. I see 1 6, roll it again, and it is a 5. So the hobgoblin hits the dwarf. Should have announced that I was trying to uh, get a critical hit there. Might do that for the night goblin. Now we have the goblin bow has a strength of 2 and the dwarf has a toughness of C. 2 against C is a 5 plus to kill. And I don't see a 5. Now let's do the same with the night goblin. Night goblin has got a little bit better ballistic skill. He's got a ballistic skill of 3. So that means he needs a 7 to hit. And this time I, I am trying to get that critical hit in there. But well, I was going to say first after all a 6, which I do. Reroll into a 4. And it is a 4. Now critical hit works as follows. I have to roll a die for each wound the target has. In this case two. All the dwarves have two wounds. These both need to kill. So I both need 5 plus on them. If they do, then the dwarf is killed outright. If even one of them is not a 5 plus, then there are no wounds done whatsoever. Let's see what happens. I got a 2 and a 3. Well, it makes a 5 if you combine them, but definitely no harm done on the Dwarf. Now we get to the second movement phase. There's no combat, so we go straight to the second movement phase. The Hobgoblins move up 5 inches again. And the regular Goblins 4 inches. Then we have the magic phase, but neither side has magic, so we're going to skip that. And also the route phase, we don't have anything that's routing. And I don't expect there will be anything to route, because they're all single models and routing usually happens with units. So what we are going to do here is we are going to go straight into the dwarfs turn 1. This is the time where I should turn this counter to 1, but it's already at 1. So let's go to the dwarfs. Now, my dwarves are not going to charge down, of course. Uh, one of them will move around a little bit, which is this one. He can move three and a half inches. So he's going to move over there, just to hold, uh, help hold that choke point. Now, the way I'm going to do it is like this. There is room for two goblins on the stairs at any time. Uh, so if I have two dwarves over there, they can hold the choke point. The dwarfs will get a bonus of plus one for being uphill. The hobgoblins and the goblins, they can get onto the pyramid. Um, this counts, the, these rubble pieces, they count as difficult terrain, but it's a little bit difficult to place my miniatures on top of that. 
So I'm just going to see if I can ignore them sort of. Only count them as terrain, a difficult terrain when crossing but not have miniatures standing on top of them that's uh, going to be a little bit uh, wobbly. Now the shooting phase. Um, my crossbow dwarfs they have not moved and there is no rule for facing in this first edition. But in the Citadel Compendium there is a rule that I wish to apply. This rule is that you can shoot anywhere within 90 degrees to your front. If you shoot outside of that 90 degrees, you can do that. So skirmishers can. Uh, so, well, I'm not, sh I'm not sure. Uh, I believe it's for skirmishers, but let's say it also works for single models. If you shoot outside of that 90 degrees, you're at minus one to hit. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to apply that here. This dwarf is going to shoot at this goblin, the hobgoblin with the bow, and the other dwarf is going to turn around and try to get a critical hit. On the hobgoblin hero. My dwarf shooting at the hobgoblin archer has a bow skill of 4. He's got a crossbow which means that he's got a 32 inch range. He's well within 16 inches within half range so no penalty supply. Straight up 3 plus to hit. And I roll a 4 so the hobgoblin is hit. The crossbow has a strength of 4 and the goblin has a toughness class of uh, C, that's a 3 plus to kill. I roll a 1 so the goblin survives. Now this one firing outside of his 90 degree arc means that he has now a, not a 3 plus but a 4 plus to hit. He, oh, let's roll that again. He's got a 2 so he misses. Then we go to the dwarf second movement phase. Let's just get this guy over here. Well, maybe not all the way. Let's keep him there with his rock. And see if we can uh, use that now or in a later turn. Since this one is stationary, I should have done that in the first movement phase. Uh, I could have had him looking for rocks. Um, but well, since I didn't announce it, that doesn't really count. And my crossbow dwarf, or the crossbow dwarf, is going to move over to here so that they can both, well let's put him a little bit like this, so that they can both shoot at what's here in front of the, on the table. Let's move on to goblin turn 2. We get reinforcements, d6 goblins, 6. And now the dwarf player gets to the side, so it's going to be for the dwarf player very advantageous to have those goblins come on the table over here on this side uh, or maybe on the on the other side but it's a little bit too far back I can't really reach that so I'm going to get a nice even spread of two each of goblins nine goblins with spears and nine goblins with bows And then we get to the movement phase. Frenzy checks for these hobgoblins. Not going to do the archers, but I am going to do the other ones. Let's start with the sneaky git. He doesn't frenzy. The X man, he does. The other X man also does, and the final sneaky git also does. So these three are now frenzy as well. Frenzy means that you have to charge if you can. So let's just say that we are going to charge. Now I think I'm going to... I'm not going to square off the heroes against each other just yet. Because I think that the Water well, Dwarf is a lot stronger than the Hobgoblin hero. So that wouldn't make much of a fight. So the Hobgoblin hero is going to charge this guy. See if I can do that without him falling over backwards. And let's get. Uh, well, he was the first one to have frenzy. Let's get him in contact with this guy. Uh, but before I do that, I have to make a fear check because of the magic hammer. Fear check in this edition is just a straight up d6. 
And depending on what you roll, it means if you can charge or maybe even if you have to run away. I got a 5, so the Hobgoblin can get into contact with the Dwarf Hero. Now the other two, they have to get in close or as close as they can. And the rest are just going to move their normal move. Let's get the archers in over here. These are slowly coming up. And all of the goblins on this side are going to move over and run alongside the uh, the outer rim of the pyramid to get to the entrance point over there. Shooting phase. Let's see if these two night goblins might be able to hit one of the dwarves. Uh, I think this one might be the closest the one with the pickaxe. So I'm going to try that to have them fire at the miner. And these two are going to fire at the lone dwarf warrior over here. And uh, this guy as well. So, let's see. These are all within 8 inches. Just barely, but he is within 8 inches. So they can all shoot within normal range. And the other archers are... Well, one of them is... No, they are just barely out of range. Well, let's say one of them is in range and the other one is out of range. Let's try those first. That's a 7 plus to hit because of the ballistic skill of 3, the bow skill of 3. No 6. These hobgoblins are at a 7 plus as well. And this night goblin is at a 6 plus. So I'm going to do the night goblin first. No 6. The two hobgoblins. And I also don't see any 6s. So they all miss. Then we get to the combat phase. Now there's a lot of things going on in the combat phase because, well, a lot of troops have extra attacks and you get bonuses for charging and counter charging and whatnot. So let's just go and see what happens here. First off, the initiative. The Hobgoblin Chieftain Gutnork, he has an initiative of 3 and he's got 2 attacks. And my dwarves also have an initiative of 3 and 2 attacks. That means that the Dwarf goes at initiative 3 and then 2 and the Hobgoblin goes at initiative 3 and then 2. But because the Hobgoblin charged he gets plus 1 initiative. So the first attack by the Hobgoblin and then you get an attack by the Hobgoblin and an attack by the Dwarf that are simultaneously. And then you get another attack for the Dwarf assuming he is still alive. Now the to hit roll is uh, modified. There are dice modifiers here, so I assume you just roll first and then do the modifier. Um, well, because it is the dice that is modified. So let's see here. The Hobgoblin has a weapon skill of uh, 5, Katnark, and the Dwarves have a weapon skill of 7. 5 against 7, 5 against 6 plus is a 5 plus to hit. He charged, so he gets plus 1, that means it's a 4 plus to hit. Um, he is frenzied, so he gets plus 2 again. Oh, that's right, frenzy gives you plus 4 initiative. So these are way up. So I'm going to grill these together. Uh, frenzied, so he gets uh, plus 2 to hit. And. Yeah, that's everything that's going on there. So, usually a 5 plus, but now he gets plus 3, so that's a 2 plus to hit. Both of them hit. Then to kill, the Hobgoblin has a uh, strength of 2 only, Godlark. And the Dwarves have a toughness of C, so that's a 5 plus to kill. Ooh, I get a 5 and a 6. That dwarf's a goner. The dwarf has a armor save. He's got a 5 plus armor save. So, let's see if I can roll that. Oh, I roll it once. So that's good. 
Um, yeah, that means that the dwarf has one wound because the dwarfs have two wounds each. And that means that my dwarf can still attack. Two attacks from the dwarf. He's got a weapon skill of 7 versus 5 is a 4 plus. But because he's fighting uphill, that's a 3 plus to hit. I go to two sixes, so it is definitely hit. Then the strength of my dwarf is 2. Toughness C, so that's a 5 plus against the Hobgoblin Chieftain. No 5s, so the Hobgoblin Chieftain still survives. Then we get the other combat, where we have Thorgrim versus a regular Hobgoblin. Thorgrim has an initiative of 5 and 3 attacks. The regular Hobgoblin has an initiative of 3 and 1 attack. But the initiative of 3 gets plus 1 for the charge, so that's 4. And he gets plus 4 for being frenzy, so that's way up there. Hobgoblin goes first. He charged, so he gets plus 1. But he also fears my opponent, the opponent, so it's minus 2. Frenzy is plus 2, so it's just plus 1. Hobgoblin has a web skill of 3. 3 versus 6 plus is uh, a 6 to hit, but now it's a 5 to hit. He rolls a 3, so no hit. Web skill 8, because that's what Thorgrim has, versus 3 is a 2 plus to hit. Fighting uphill, so I'm assuming that's a 1 plus to hit. Not sure if that counts, but uh, let's just see. I, I, yeah, I think it does. Um, there's nothing that the that says that the the dice cannot be lower than one or something like that. So um, let's see that they are three hits, and I think even with two hits, that Hobgoblin is uh, well. He might not be dead because he's got an extra wound for being frenzied. Three hits. I'm just going to play it like this. Uh, three hits. Thorgrim has a strength of. Three. Hobgoblins have a toughness of C. That's a four plus to hit. Uh, sorry to kill. I get one six. So the hobgoblin has to save, but he doesn't have a save. Then he has to save against poison, because that's what the hammer does. Saving against poison works like this. Uh, first, you must uh, save separately. Then you roll a d6 saving throw, it's one dice pip per strength grade. So a strength grade of one requires six to save, two requires five or six, three requires four to six, etc. So I need a four, five or six. Um, what was the strength grade? It doesn't make sense. assume that uh, since I'm not going to get the answer from this book I'm going to assume that it is the other way around so if you have a uh, strength grade of one you need a you fail on a one if you get a strength grade of two you fail on a two or three uh, one or two if you get a strength grade of three in my case you fail on a one two three so you can need a four to six to save let's see if the goblin saves against poison got a three so he's dead First skill for the dwarves. Then we get the second movement phase. So the hobgoblins can move. I'm going to get him in over here. These can move up four inches over there. And these are going in a goblin train, conga line, four inches this way. There we go. Now it's Dwarf turn 2, and now my Dwarf can charge. I don't think he's within range. Um, he should... Uh, well, I did say that he has to charge if he... because of the hatred. Uh, my hero will charge the Hobgoblin hero anyway. He can make it because... well, this counts double, so this is 3.5 inches. 
that means that he definitely can't make it because even if it is seven inches then there's still no way he can get across that obstacle uh, which is half movement he's just going to move up three and a half inches over there hold the other end of the choke point the rest are going to stay where they are then we get to the shooting phase these two are going to try and shoot at the hobgoblin archers one on each of the archers I'm going to start with him who hits on a 4 plus he's got a 6 so he hits strength 4 toughness C is a 3 plus yeah. and he of course misses and the other one at the other hobgoblin archer strength uh, but uh, ballistic skill is correct and the uh, strength is again a 1 so the crossbows they hit but they don't seem to kill anything must be the freshly painted miniature scores but that should work on both sides now we get to combat now a lot of things are happening because my hobgoblin hero is frenzied he's got two attacks at an initiative level of Let's see, it was my Hobgoblin hero. I believe he had three, so that should put him at seven and six. So this one's going at seven, and this one is going at six. Just going to put out a six there. Then my dwarf hero, Thorgrim, he charged. He's got an initiative of five, but charging gives him plus one. That means that he is at six. Then five and then four. And something else that I forgot is that Thorgrim causes fear, or at least his hammer does. So I needed to take a fear check with my hobgoblin to see if he was able to uh, if he if he can take the charge or if he's going to run away. I got a five, so he is taking charge. That's good. And I've got one regular dwarf who has two attacks at his regular initiative of 3 and then 2. So I'm going to start with the Hobgoblin. He's got one attack and he's going to aim it at the Dwarf over there that is uh, standing there being wounded and uh, he is going to try to finish the job. There is no charging for him he is still frenzied, plus two. Um, well, he does fear the combat opponent, but it's not the one that he is aiming at. So I'm not sure if that works. I'm not going to count it. Let's just say I'm not going to count it. Now his weapon skill is five against seven. Uh, five against six plus is a five. That means that he needs a three plus to hit and he hits then he's got a strength of 2 I believe against a toughness of C so that's a 5 plus to kill and he does kill let's see if my dwarf can save he does not save so we have one dead dwarf that's two victory points for the hobgoblins to put him over here as a victory counter that means that these attacks are now gone and that the hobgoblin has only one attack left which he has to direct at Thorgrim I'm just going to roll this one attack for the hobgoblin first the other ones I can then do all at the same time Thorgrim has a web skill of 8 but it's still a 5 plus he is frenzied he is uh, but he's also feared so that's a regular 5 plus to hit no 5 plus there Thorgrim then, he has three attacks at a web skill of eight versus five is a three plus. He charged, so that's a two plus. I'm not going to say that he is uphill. Well, maybe he is uphill. Well, no, then that would make it a one plus. So that's not uh, really fair. Let's let's just go with two plus. They're all at two plus anyway. Then he's got a strength of. 3 against toughness C 
Strength 3, toughness C is a 4 plus, 2 kill. I've got 2 kills. Since my Hobgoblin is frenzied, he has to ditch his armor. That means that he has to save each wound against poison. He's got 2 wounds. Um, usually that would mean he's out of action, but because he's frenzied, he's still got 1 wound left. He has to save against poison. Both of these need to be a 4 plus in order for him to survive or else he is out of the game. And both of them are not a 4 plus. So the Hobgoblin hero Gutnork is no more. He bravely took out the dwarf, but what well, he didn't manage to do much else. That just means we need to take morale checks because the uh, enemy general of the the general is killed morale checks are a straight up d6 if we roll a 0 a 1 or a 2 then things start happening and people start uh, routing routing on the 0 you must retreat for two turns on a 1 and you must either hold or retreat for two turns at player's discretion on a 2 on a 3 you are fine um the modifiers are as follows. You get, where are they? Minus one if the unit is below half of its original strength and numbers. So that's not really much of a uh, thing here. You do get minus one if something you fear is within 15 inches. So these all get minus one here. If you are under attack by magic or by magically summoned creatures, minus one. Enemy missile within 15 inches, minus one, minus two if you're already routed. Plus one if you have not yet suffered casualties. Well, I don't think that will count because we're all at single models and not units. So I'm just not going to count that. Plus two if the unit is led by a hero. And minus one for single figures only for each wound point sustained. And I believe it was later amended to be for any wounds sustained. But that's not a problem anyway. So, um, these all get minus one because of the fear causing hammer. And they are at a regular, normal, no modified dice roll. Let's start with this Night Goblin Spearman in the back. He gets a 5, he's safe. The Archer gets a 1. So he's running for 2 turns. Gonna turn him around. This Night Goblin Archer also gets a 1. He's also running. Brave Night Goblins. The first Goblin, the one with the Flail, he's safe. The other one is also safe and the last night goblin runs away as well. Then we go over to this side. Starting here with the night goblin archer. He is safe, the goblin with the axe and shield. He's got the two. I'm just going to say that he's going to run away as well. Having him be stationary for two turns might be a little bit confusing. A lot of bookkeeping there. The hobgoblin archer on this side got a four. Um, the hobgoblin. Well, that's minus one. All I, by the way. So he's running anyway. The hobgoblin sneaky git got a six. He's safe. This hobgoblin archer got a one. That's a zero. That means that he routes. Going to turn him around and do that in the route phase. Got two more. Got the axeman over here. He's safe. And got the sneaky git who is a two, but that turns into a one. There we go. Um, they have to move away for two full turns, so I'm assuming that's starting with next turn, um, that they can't move this turn, or maybe they move away right now, and then again in the next turn, and then once more in the subsequent turns, first move phase. It is a difficult game, first edition. So let's just... Uh, Let's just say that they are moving now and let, let's let's just just to make things a little bit more um, a little bit more practical, a little bit more streamlined, I'm going to say they are all moving retreating in the route phase. Even though it's only routing troops, uh, I'm still going to say that all of the troops move in the route phase. So now first we get the Second, uh, no, let's say, wait, wait, wait up. This was the dwarf's turn, so the dwarfs now get their second movement phase in which they don't move. Then we get to the route phase. 
He moves away his full normal move of 4. So does he, his full normal move of 5. This one routes, that means that he moves away at charge pace. Uh, but he gets to make a um, uh, he, he must make a normal morale check and score at least three to rally. And it is at the end of each turn any player may attempt to rally. So he first moves away at charge speed 10 inches. And then he may attempt to rally on a 3 plus. Let's just do that now. He rolls a 2, so he doesn't rally. He keeps on going. And then these three, they move away at 1, 2, and 3. Four times that normal move space. Right, next turn for the goblins. Goblin turn 3. We get d6 reinforcements again. One reinforcement. Uh, let's just roll off. On a 1-2 it's going to be a Night Goblin with a spear, on a 3-4 he's got a bow, and on a 5-6 it's a regular Goblin. It's a 5, a regular Goblin joins us at the table. The Dwarf player decides he enters from this side of the table. And then we get to the movement phase. Now there is one of these that has not frenzied yet, and I believe it was this sneaky git, so he's going to try that. And he does not frenzy. He has to charge, and well, uh, he's just going to try to charge the dwarf over here on this side, because he's got a better chance at that. And the other one, well, he has to make it past the choke point anyway, so he's just going to attack Thorgrim, see if he can do something. Need a fear check for that. And he is afraid, he's so afraid, by the way, that he has to run away. Um, he must spend one turn retreating. So I'm going to turn him around, he has to retreat. There's a lot of running away going on here, that's good. Then we get the... Other goblins, they are going to move, these move 4 inches in the conga line fashion. The goblin conga line. Then we get shooting phase. I've got two arches over here and they are both going to shoot at Thorgrim. And they are both going to try to get a critical hit, which is probably very far out. But first they have to make a fear check. The Night Goblin is feared. He may not, sh uh, he may shoot but he may not charge. And the Hobgoblin is not feared at all. So they can both shoot the Night Goblin on a 6 plus and the goblin, uh, Hobgoblin on a 7 plus. No for the Night Goblin and no for the Hobgoblin. Now we get to the combat phase. The Hobgoblin has a strength, uh, in, sorry, initiative of 3, but he charged, so he has 4. The Dwarf has an initiative of 3, but he's got 2 attacks. So one of them is at 3 and the other one is at initiative 2. They can both go together anyway. Now the Hobgoblin has... Um, he was frenzied, he is frenzied, so his initiative is even higher again. He is... Uh, plus two because being frenzied and plus one for being charged, for having charged. His usually he needs a six to hit. Now he needs a three plus to hit. Am I saying it correctly? Yeah, three plus to hit. He hits. And to kill he needs a let's see strength of two versus toughness. See he needs a five plus. And he's got a six. Oh, the hobgoblins are very good at hitting for some reason. The Dwarf can save, he's got a 5 plus armor save, which he saves. And the Dwarf gets to, dwarf gets to strike back. He gets just plus 1 for being uphill. Uh, Red skill of 7 versus 3 is a 3 plus, would now be a 2 plus. Both of them hit. And he's got a strength of 
2 versus C, so a 5 plus for him as well. Got 1 6 and 1 1. The Hobgoblin, being in transit, had to discard his shield, so he has a, a single wound, he sustained a single wound, meaning he still has one wound left. That's a benefit for being frenzied. Then we get the second movement phase. Um, let's just get the archers in here because they are not going to shoot much anyway. So let's just get them into combat. And these goblins move up four inches, all of them. Then we get the route phase. This uh, this one moves 10 inches, meaning he is off the table. He won't be able to rally. These retreat 4 inches, meaning they are both off the table as well. This one is still on the table. So this is the second turn retreating. He retreats for one turn uh, at five inches he's over there and he is going five and the goblin is going four so these are I think now everything is done retreating so I'm just going to turn these around to show that they are done retreating that they can move and do their thing once more when it's the goblin turn. But now first it's the dwarf turn. Now I did say when an enemy is on the same level and you are hatred you are going to charge. So my dwarf hero Thorgrim is going to charge at this hobgoblin here. Um, before I do that I have to make a fear check. I keep forgetting that. The goblin is feared. Um, he breaks and routes if being charged. Well, let's just put him back there. Let's see what happens. He breaks and routes. He moves away uh, towards the table edge. So I'm guessing that's back this way. And that is at full charge speed. So that's uh, 10 inches. But that is in the routing phase, I guess. Either way, uh, if they break, then the troops all get one free attack. Yeah, their opponents may strike one free blow. It's just one attack from the dwarf. At uh, web skill 7 versus 3, still got the high ground. So let's say 2 plus. He hits. And a strength of 2 versus C is a 5 plus. He does not kill. So the goblin is safe. He merely runs away, um, which I said was going to happen in the route phase, so let's just uh, say it will happen in the route phase. First I got the two archers. The first one is going to shoot at the hobgoblin, and the other one is going to shoot at the night goblin. The hobgoblin is hit on a 3+, which means he's not hit. Night goblin also hit on a 3+, he is hit. And he's got a toughness of Night Goblins, all goblins have a toughness of B. Strength 4, toughness B is a 2 plus to kill. So the Night Goblin is out of action, he doesn't have a save anyway. Finally, a crossbow does something. Night Goblin taken down, end of shooting phase, we already did combat sort of, so end of combat. He routes, he runs away, 10. And let's not forget his wound over there. And let's see, one was rallying again at the end of each turn. Right. So now he attempts to rally. And he rallies on a 4. That was the end of the dwarf turn. Uh, no, yeah, we still got movement, but we don't need to move. So that's the end of the dwarf turn two. Now we get into hobgoblin turn three. Was this even dwarf turn three? Yes, it was. I forgot to move the counter. 
Right, goblin turn four of this. We get d6 goblins, meaning one. Gonna roll again, uh, same randomization as what I did before. Three, that's an eye goblin with a spear. Coming in from this side. And then, nothing was running away, so everything can just move and charge. He still gets to go into a frenzy, he hasn't done that yet. And I'm going to try for the Hobgoblin Archer as well. So first for the Sneaky Git, a 2, he doesn't frenzy. And for the Archer, a 1, he also doesn't frenzy. The Archer is going to charge at the Dwarf over there. Because, well, we fear the other one. The Sneaky Git might even make it. So I'm thinking he has to charge. Yeah, well, let's just say he charges if he passes his fear test, of course. Which he does. So, sneaky git against Thorgrim. And not frenzied sneaky git. This one, oh, he should also have been able to charge, but well, he doesn't make it. So he moves 10. Um, yeah, because he's frenzied, so he has to move 10. Was this one frenzied? I don't remember. I think he was. So he also has to move 10. So he's going over here next to him. This one goes 4. And these all go for as well. Almost at the entrance there, guys. Right, now we get to the shooting phase for the goblins. Um, I don't think the goblins have any archers left, just this one in combat there. So let's move straight to combat. Let's do the archer first. He charged, he's got one attack at initiative 3. Uh, becomes 4 for being for having charged. The dwarf has two attacks at 3 and then 2. So the goblin gets to go first. He's got a web skill of uh, 3. I should know this by now. First a 7 is a 6 plus, but he charged, so it's a 5 plus, no frenzy. No, he doesn't hit. The dwarf, 7 versus 3 is a 3 plus, but fighting uphill, so that's a 2 plus. Two hits from the dwarf on the goblin, 5 plus to kill. And one of them kills, so the archer is taken out. That's it, definitely no more shooting for the goblins. Then the other one, he also doesn't have frenzy, he's got a charge at initiative 4, but Thorgrim has an initiative of 5, so he's got 3 attacks, one at 5, then 4, and then if there's any left over at 3. Starting with, uh, starting with uh, Thorgrim, he's got uh, uphill, and he's got well. No, fear is just that this one is at minus, so he just gets plus one. Uh, eight versus three is a two plus, plus one. I guess a one plus. I'm not sure if that counts, but let's just say it does. He hits his first one. To kill, he's got a strength of 3 versus toughness C is a 4 plus. He does kill. Oh, wait, the other goblin has two weapons, so I'm just assuming that this is an extra attack as well. Uh, anyway, it doesn't really matter because he kills and he doesn't have any armor, uh, so there's no use in saving against poison. So this goblin is taken out, knocked off of the pyramid. Now we get to the second movement phase. Um, that means that this goblin can move up 4 inches. And these can go... Well, let's say if they, they are sneaky, so let's just have them go around the back. That's 2 inches to there, 1 inch to cross. So he gets to stand over there. He can make it to there. 4. 
for more. Let's see, I don't think these have been in have been on screen. Ah, they are now. Let me just zoom out a tiny little bit. Oh, that's in. There we go. Now we get the dwarf turn four. There we go. Um Yes, how are we going to do this? Because now the goblins are going that way and not this way. I think I might just do something silly here and charge down with Thorgrim. Make a little bit of a sortie. He gets down there, uh, charging both of them. So they both have to take a fear test. Let's do that. A fear test for him. He is... Uh, well, he's got a 3. That's not necessarily fine. Yeah, he breaks and routes. So, he's gone. Run away. And the other one... He also breaks and routes. This one will move 3.5 inches to here. Giving up the choke point, well not much of a choke point left there anyway, because there's not much to choke. And going to uh, defend over there. Getting to the shooting phase. Um, yeah, my dwarves are positioned in such a way that they can still only shoot at this. So, the miner is going to drop a rock on the goblin. Let's start with that. Then this dwarf is going to shoot at the goblin, the one that has not routed yet. And this dwarf will shoot at the hobgoblin with the additional hand weapon. Um, for good measure, because that's the one that hasn't frenzied yet. Starting with the rock dropping. I got a 3, so that's not a 7. But this rock is now gone. It's been dropped, but he misses. Then the uh, crossbowman firing at the goblin, he misses, and the crossbowman firing at the hobgoblin that has not frenzied, he hits, and he kills as well. So this one is taken out. Now we get to the combat phase, no combat, we get to the move phase, second move phase. So he's going to move three and a half inches to there, ready to drop a rock on an unsuspecting goblin. And he's also going to move a bit to the next rock over there. Then the route phase, he has to run his full charge range ten inches to there. I can attempt to rally, grabbing 2d6 just out of habit. Uh, needs to roll just 1d6. Got a 5, so that means he rallies. He can fight another day. On to Goblin turn 5. The Goblin hates the Dwarf, so he has to charge, take a fear test. He is feared, so he may not charge. Then the other Goblins are just going to move. He is going to move 4 inches this way. He has to cross some difficult terrain, so he's going to move 2 inches that way. This one has to cross some difficult terrain as well. So he can stand over there. And these all just pull up from the rear. Trying to get in there, but I think it's safe to say that the dwarves are definitely... Uh, they definitely got a better position over here. So here we go, um, goblin shooting phase, no shooting, combat phase, no combat, second movement phase, he charged so he cannot do anything, oh wait I forgot him, he rallied so he can do uh, 5, well he has to do 10 because he's still frenzied. This goblin can move 4, he's going this way around, this goblin can move 4, doesn't really make it to there, so he has to stop over there. This one moves four. 
put them somewhere around there and this one moves forward to there right now it seems that because of this movement the goblins might actually get in on the pyramid there so uh, yeah let's see what happens starting uh, dwarf turn 5 now Um oh I forgot to move my crossbowman. Well it doesn't really matter. I'll just do that next turn. Starting with the movement for the dwarfs. I'm still going to charge with Thorgrim just at him, just to see what happens now. He once again flees. He bravely runs away this hobgoblin. Might get an arrow stuck in his back there. This one moves three and a half inches putting him in a position to drop a rock. He will do something similar. Uh, yeah going well going over here so he can drop this rock on the goblin and the archers are going to shoot one at the hobgoblin and the other one at the goblin. Starting with the Hobgoblin. He is hit on a 3+. plus. Oh, he loses his wound. Let me reroll that. No, he's not hit. The Goblin is hit on a 3+. plus. He is hit. He is uh, wounded or killed on a 4 against B is a 2 plus even. And of course that's a 1. This Goblin gets a rock dropped on his head on a 7 plus, which is a 6, and this goblin on a 7 plus, which is an 8. Oh, I have to take away this rock because that one is now dropped. And the same for this one, but this one falls on a goblin, causes a strength to hit. 2 versus B is a 4 plus, he gets a 5. The goblin gets a 6 plus armor save. He doesn't make it, so the goblin is taken out. That was the shooting phase, now we get to the combat phase, but there's no combat. Then we get to the route phase. This goblin runs away as well, uh, again, I should say. Then he may attempt to rally. I roll a 1, so he doesn't rally. He keeps running away the next turn, and that means that next turn he will probably be off the table. What am I saying? He will definitely be off the table. Now it is the Goblin turn 6. He gets to charge if he makes his fear check. Which he does. He bravely charges at Thorgrim. Probably going to meet his doom there. But uh, well, we'll see. This one moves 4 inches. And let's just say that he goes this way 2 inches. And the other ones too, because well, moving to the side of the pyramid where Thorgrim is not is, I think, for these goblins a very good idea. Let's just uh, let's just roll for the combat there. Goblin has an initiative of. Well, maybe Thorgrim should have countercharged. Forgot that that's a thing in this edition. Oh well, let's just give the goblin an extra extra point on his web skill then. The goblin has an initiative of 3. Charging gets him to 4. Thorgrim is at 5, then 4, and then 3. Thorgrim gets to go first. He hits on a 4 plus uphill. Yeah, he needs a 1 plus or something like that, so he hits. He's got a strength of 3, toughness for the goblin is B. That's a still a 4 plus to kill. He doesn't kill. Then the goblin and Thorgrim go simultaneously. I'll do the goblin first. The goblin's got a web skill of 3. He has. Um, he should have a 6 to hit. Uh, he is charging, so that's plus 1, so that's a 5 to hit, but he's at minus 2 for fearing the opponent, so that's a 7, 6 followed by a 4 
and he hits Thorgrim. Strength of 2 versus Toughness C for Thorgrim. 2 versus C is a 5 plus to kill. He doesn't kill. Then Thorgrim has two more attacks to make. Uh, they, I'm just going to roll them together. He's got uh, a 1 plus to hit, which hit. And he's got a 4 plus to kill. One of them kills. He has to make a save. The goblin. He doesn't make his save, so he's dead. So there's not even saving for poison there. The goblins have their second movement phase. This one moves four. This one moves four. He can go over there and he just has to wait over there. Um well I think they can both cross. This goblin is going to move over there. So he's just going to stand there on the ready to charge or to get charged. Because now it's dwarf turn six. Oh, and I still forgot to move these dwarfs. I am so such for clots. Thorgrim is going to charge. And the goblin is feared. He routes, he runs away. This goblin has gone off the table in the route phase. This one is moving away. Going to do it in the route phase. This dwarf is going three and a half. Putting him over there. Well, let's just say he is going to look for a rock on a 4+, plus, which he does not find, so he doesn't have any rocks to throw. I was hoping to get one on top of that goblin there, but uh, that seemed to not have worked. Going for the shooting phase then, he is going to shoot at, let's say, the first night goblin, and he is going to shoot at the goblin there. Both are at minus 1 for having to turn around because I didn't position him correctly. First at the night goblin, hit on a 4 plus, he misses and the goblin is hit on a 6. Then we've got a strength of 4 against toughness B is a 2 plus to kill. I got a 2 so the goblin is dead. Now in the second move phase they are going to move this way and this way so that they can both cover that corner of the pyramid. He can move three and a half but because of the difficult range it's just 175 so he's standing sort of over there. I think I can manage that. This goblin runs away for eight. Uh, this goblin first can get to rally which he does. Now it's the goblin's turn. They move, he moves four, taking him to the bottom of the stairs there. He moves four, taking him to the corner. And four for him. Oh, I forgot to move that dwarf. Oh well. I'll just do that uh, next turn. Then, no shooting, no combat. So just these. Uh, oh, he can move four as well. Uh, then just second move, putting him back there. He can get up on this level, goblin over there, and a goblin over there. Dwarf turn 7. Thorgrim once again going to charge. The goblin is not feared, so he takes a dwarf hammer to the face. He is also going to charge with his great weapon at the goblin. There's no fear checks over there so he's just going to rush in. He can move 175 because he's still crossing this wide well, a little bit more because he doesn't of course need his full move there. Um, shooting one crossbow bolt at each of the goblins on a 3 plus for the first goblin he misses the second goblin. He is also missed. Sorely missed. Combat phase. Thorgrim. He charged. He definitely gets to go first with I think all three of his attacks. Yes. Thorgrim goes first. He hits three times. He kills the goblin on a five. That's a single kill that he got. 
Uh, the goblin's got a 6 plus armor save because he got a shield, which he doesn't make, so this goblin is gone as well. And then we get something fun because the other goblin over there, uh, or at least the other dwarf, they've got some weapons. Um, Maybe the goblin should have countercharged. Let's say that he did that. There we go. Um, that means that they both get their plus one initiative, so their initiative is still what it is. And the goblin has a longer weapon, so he gets plus one initiative. And the heavy weapon gets plus one to kill, so he gets plus one to kill. The goblin gets plus one initiative, and the uh, dwarf gets plus one to kill. Goblin is he's another goblin. Initiative two puts him to three. The dwarf is also at three, so the first attack goes simultaneously, and then there's another attack for the dwarf. Let's do the goblin first. The goblin um, has a web skill of two, I believe. Yeah, web skill two. Against 7, so that's a 7 plus 2 hit. Uh, but there are still some things there. Charge, uh, counter charge, that's one. They're not uphill, not frenzied, not fighting offensively. Uh, none of these. No, so none of these things will work. So all the goblin misses. And the dwarf, 7 versus 2 is a 2 plus. Both of them are at 2. They get plus 1 on his to kill. So he's got a strength of 2 versus toughness B is a 4 plus, but it should be a 3 plus then. Both of them kill, so this goblin is taken out of action. Then we get the second movement phase for the dwarfs. Um, he just moves up 3.5 inches. And then we get the goblin's turn again. Well, I think we can pretty safely call this here. Let's just get the goblins up there. And um, yeah, I don't think they can charge just yet. So let's just get one goblin over here. One goblin over here. And then in the second goblin movement phase, pull up this one. Get two of them together over there. Then in dwarf turn 8. The, he cannot charge yet because he's still looking over there. Um, yeah, I, sh I should just position him here. Get this one in here for a charge. He's just going to take on two goblins at a time. The goblins can of course counter charge. So that's a thing. Meet in the middle there. Uh, the goblins have longer weapons, so they get plus one initiative, meaning that they are at four. No, they are at three then. What was it again? They got initiative two, so they are now at three. So two night goblins, and the first attack of the dwarf, and then the second attack of the dwarf. The night goblins are going to try to get a critical hit, both of them. And they are going to... Uh, hit on a 7 plus first. I see no 6s there, so no critical hits. Dwarf is going to uh, do one attack at each of the goblins. Uh, the first one hits on a 4 plus and kills on a 6, and the second one hits on a 3 plus and kills on a 4. And I forgot that they are ar they all have armor saves. So let's just see, do I get any sixes? Let's just roll for the last one for good measure, but also another six. There you have it. All of the goblins are gone. And the dwarves have won the day. With much fewer losses than I had expected. But they did not get much opposition from the goblins. And I'm sure this is a lot more fun to play with an opponent. So maybe if you see this, and if you want to do a remote game, I have all the miniatures here. Feel free to let me know. The dwarves have clearly won the day. They suffered one casualty. One poor little dwarf 
with an X is gone. I might have to tweak this to make it a little bit more balanced with the weapons and the armor, but since there are no points values given, there are no rules for armor or anything, I just sort of tried to wing it and see what happened. Right, um, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this battle report of the Ziggurat of Doom. I definitely enjoyed playing it, even though first edition is rather difficult to play. Uh, it might even be at a disadvantage because I've played later editions of Warhammer, so I'm expecting things to happen that don't necessarily happen or are not necessarily clarified in the rules. So I'm not really sure about that and if I played it correctly I probably made a lot of mistakes. If you ever played first edition and you spotted some of these mistakes please let me know then I can correct them for a future game because of course I also want to learn this. For now um, first edition yeah did I enjoy it? Definitely. Definitely a nice uh, scenario here. It also feels very Warhammer-y, the way that it works with the, the movement and, and uh, to hit and to kill. The things are named a little bit differently sometimes. There are some fun mechanics there, fear having a range. Uh, there's another fun mechanic which is the second movement phase. Because usually you just say, well my troops are making a march move. So you, t you have their full, or there you have the double move in the movement phase. But... Um, yeah, this is, uh, uh, this is a nice mechanic as well. It uh, gives, you, gives you a little bit of a... puts you in a little bit of a difficult position where you see, well, now the troops are over there. Next turn I can shoot them and then they move again and then suddenly they are no longer in range of the rocks. I tried to get in this scenario most of the mechanics that are in the scenario. I tried to get them in. Um, there's no routing, or no, at least no, no breaking and routing in combat. There's no prolonged combat anyway, there hasn't been. So there's nothing of that. I might need to do a, using the Force of Fantasy rules, a, a game where we have uh, regular armies, or at least battalions, uh, aside. So I might do that for the future, maybe try to get some of those uh, battalions ready. But for now, Secret of Doom. I liked it and I hope you liked it as well. Thank you very much for watching. Like the video if you like the video. You can also subscribe to the channel for updates and to be notified about uh, new content on the channel. And uh, you might also, if you want more content like this, let me know. Any feedback is much appreciated. You can reach me via these channels that are now in the screen. And you can also join the Forces of Fantasy Patreon. Forces of Fantasy Patreon is non-tiered, which means that you can join for as little or as much as you like. And on this we put, we, I should say, I put exclusive bonus content and previews. Thanks once again for watching and see you next time. <music>